right. Welcome to another edition of the HRC Law Class. I'm your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zakwa. We welcome you to Hebrew Readers Church. Hope you've been enjoying the edification and the time being spent together as we're learning and building in our focus for the kingdom. Today, we will discuss the fourth commandment of Ahaya, our Alahayim, the Sabbath. Let's jump right into it. Can you read Exodus chapter 16, verse 22 and 23, please? And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, this is that which Ahiah have said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto Ahiah. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seed that which ye will seed, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. All right. So we see here that we are supposed to gather provisions and do all cooking and baking before the Sabbath to lay up whether in the fridge or let's sit out at room temperature to eat on the Sabbath because eating food up or cooking it on the Sabbath is unlawful for us to do. Continue in verse 24, 25, and 50, please. Exodus chapter 16, verse 24. And they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, Eat that today. For today is a Sabbath unto Ahiah. Today you shall not find it in the field. Exodus chapter 16, verse 30. So the people rested on the seventh day. So through the testimonies, eat the cooked or baked food that was laid up without heating it up on the Sabbath so we can eat, drink, and rest on the Sabbath as it is not lawful to prepare food or drink on the Sabbath. By law, in Jubilee chapter 2, verse 29, can you read that portion, please? And that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk. So, we don't cook or bake or heat up food on Sabbath, nor do we prepare food on Sabbath, as in making a salad or a sandwich or a bowl of cereal. Preparations have to be made on the sixth day, yet... Let's see what we can do with the food we cooked or prepared before Sabbath on the Sabbath day. Can you read Jubilees chapter 50, verse 9, please? You shall do no work whatever on the Sabbath day, save that ye are prepared for yourselves on the sixth day, so as to eat and drink. So, we can do work pertaining to the food prepared before the Sabbath. Though we can't cook it, heat it up, or prepare it, this means we can add condiments to the food and drink already prepared on the Sabbath, like salad dressing, salt or sugar or jelly, as that's lawful work we can do on the Sabbath. Otherwise, it's a day of rest. Can you continue reading that verse, please? And rest and keep Sabbath from all work on that day. And to bless Ahayah your Elohim, who has given you a day of festival and a holy day. And the day of the holy kingdom for all Israel is this day among their days forever. So it's a day of blessing Allah and festival and joy with the kingdom in mind. So it's a party to enjoy music and a good time, letting the kids play and enjoying the day as well. And as you see, Ahaya gave it for a day of festival where his servants, even as an employer in the world, he gives us a day off and wants us to relax, all right? Let's see how he wants us to enjoy the day. Sirach 40 and 20, please. Wine and music rejoice the heart, but the love of wisdom is above them both. So, be merry and enjoy the feast with music and juices, yet seek after wisdom which rejoices the heart above them both. And in order to get her, we have to keep the commandments. Can you read Sirach chapter 1, verse 26, please? If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. 
This is the only way to get it. Keeping the commandments. Thus, the Sabbath day is also a day of getting edification to grow in keeping the commandments and reading the law to understand the commandments. Can you read Acts chapter 15, verse 21, please? For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Likewise, on other holy days, the law is also read for edification. Can you read Nehemiah chapter 8? You read in verse 2, 3, and then you jump into 5 through 8, please. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 2. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and women and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 5. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed Ahiah, the great Elohim. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped Ahiah with their faces to the ground. And Jeshua and Bani, and Serbia, Jamin, Akub, Chabethel, Hoja, Messiah, Kelita, Azariah, Jazabad, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of the law of Elohim distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And this was all done on the Feast of Trumpets. That's the first day of the seventh month to understand that on the Sabbaths, the law is read. And also on the feast days, the law is read. And as we see the priests and Levites, their duties were to teach, as we saw Ezra and the Levites doing. Can you read Ezekiel 44 verse 15? that portion, and then jump to verse 23 and 24, please. Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 15. And the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, uh, Ezekiel 44 and 23, and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment. And they shall judge it according to my judgments. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes and all mine assemblies. And they shall hollow my Sabbaths. Of note, we talk about counselors and finding the right teachers. Notice it's not just because they're Levites or priests. They're supposed to teach and judge according to al judgments. So make sure your teacher is going according to the law and testimonies because we all have to hold each other accountable. By what Allah Hayim ordained is from the priests where we have to get the understanding from Allah Hayim. In Malachi 2 and 7, please. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of a higher of hosts. And also we have by testimonies in Judah, a lawgiver shall not depart from between his feet. So also the Lord, our king and priest, after the order of Melchizedek from the tribe of Judah, teaches on the Sabbath. Can you read Mark 6 and 2, please? And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Judah's posterity were not like a preacher, as David and Solomon were, Yachin being the same preacher in the congregation, can you read Psalms 40, verse 9, please? I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Ahiah, thou knowest. And Yache, what he's preaching is repentance. Can you read Matthew 4 and 17, please? 
From that time, Yate began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So there you have on the Sabbath teaching, preaching by the Levites and of the children of Judah's posterity. And here you have in these end times, as it says in Isaiah 11, there's going to be a son of Jesse. That same spirit of Christ is going to be in him preaching because all things have to be fulfilled. The two witnesses shall come. And you know the prophecy in Levi that by him and Judah shall Israel stand. In the stuff I'm touching on, if you would, go to the End Times playlist on the channel and reference the two videos, part one and part two, pertaining to the two witnesses for further edification about what I just mentioned. All right. Now, Christ's spirit and his apostles strengthened them to preach on the Sabbath after the laws and prophets were taught as well. Can you read Acts chapter 13, verse 13 to 16, please? Yes. Now, when Paul and his company loose from Papos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pasadena, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear Elohim, give audience. So through the testimonies we've seen, the Sabbath day is a day of eating, drinking, festival, edification, and understanding of repentance and resting from labor in our business affairs. This day is a special day to Allah Hayyam. Can you read Jubilees chapter 50 verse 10, please? For great is the honor which Ahiah hath given to Israel that they should eat and drink and be satisfied on this festival day and rest therein from all their labor which belongeth to the labor of the children of men. Thus it's a day of rest from our jobs and labors to have a festival letting the kids play and enjoying the holy day as well. We can't do business transaction on this day. Can you read Nehemiah 10 and 31, please? And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. So that helps know whether Sabbath or feast, another feast day, we don't buy and sell. We no business transactions on that day. And also, it's not a good desire to want the feast or the Sabbath to be gone for the sake of gain in business. Can you read Amos chapter 8, verse 5, please? Saying, when will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit? You also get to see here that even on the Sabbath day, we can't make business preparations, as they said, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat. Like they wanted to, I want to make preparations for business the next day. Let the Sabbath go by so I can do that. Helps us know that's not a good desire. And also, it's not something we do on the Sabbath day, right? We're truly resting on that day. Now, business owners in the faith, you give your employees a Sabbath day off to rest. And parents, let the children rest from their labors on the Sabbath day as well. Can you read Exodus chapter 20, verse 9 and 10, please? Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Ahiah the Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. The only work done in ancient time was by the priests, offering sacrifice and incense for us to find mercy. Can you read Jubilees chapter 50, this portion of verse 10 and 11, please, to see the only work that was allowed to be done by the priests? Say burning frankincense and bringing oblations and sacrifices before Ahia for days and for Sabbaths. 
This work alone shall be done on the Sabbath days in the sanctuary of Ahiah your Elohim, that ye may atone for Israel with sacrifice continually from day to day for a memorial well pleasing before Ahiah, and that he may receive them always from day to day according as thou hast been commanded. So only the priests, the sons of Aaron, and particularly in the sanctuary, only the priests can light incense and do cooking to offer sacrifices and oblations on the Sabbath day. It's not lawful for us to kindle fires on the Sabbath day in general, though. Can you read Exodus 35, verse 3, please? You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So we can't light incense or fires to cook on that day. Of course, we can keep a fire going from that day before as necessary in cold climates. With this edification, let's remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Can you read Exodus 20 verse 8, please? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, this is important to understand. How do we keep the Sabbath holy? We've learned some of the laws, but there's more to this. In order to keep it holy, we actually have to do no evil. Can you read Isaiah 56, verse 1 and 2, please. Thus saith Ahiah, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Look at that. To lay hold on judgment and justice. And salvation, we have to keep the Sabbath from polluting it and keep our hands from doing any evil. We have to be mindful not to let any evil arise in us, in our mind, to catch it and catch the lie before it enters our heart. And also let not any evil come from our heart before Allah Hayyam. This is what's needful to keep it holy. Can you read Barnabas chapter 15 verse 1, please? Moreover, concerning the Sabbath, likewise, it is written in the ten words in which he spoke to Moses face to face on Mount Sinai. And ye shall hallow the Sabbath of the Lord with pure hands and with a pure heart. Here we see our works, our hands, our works have to be pure and our heart. We actually have to do no evil to keep the Sabbath holy. And this was declared in the law. Can you read Jubilees chapter 2, verse 29, please? Declare and say to the children of Israel, the law of this day, both that they should keep Sabbath thereon, and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts, and that it is not lawful to do any work thereon, which is unseemly to do thereon their own pleasure. Hopefully this helps understand it's a day of keeping our hearts pure to do Allah will, not our own pleasure to sin. For the simplicity of what the Sabbath day is about. He said, it's not lawful to do any work thereon which is unseemly. That unseemly work is to do our own pleasure, not the things that please Allah in keeping his commandments. Okay. He teaches us these things because we need to keep this Sabbath as it's a sign between us and Allah. Can you read Exodus chapter 31, verse 12 and 13, please? And the highest spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am a higher that do sanctify you. The sign of the Sabbath being kept is for us to know that he is a higher that sanctifies us. We're attesting the truth by keeping Sabbath, we're witnessing of it. This day is important to remember who our Allahayim is and not to be turned unto another in serving idols, nor to take his name in vain. So you can see how the prior commandments, the first three, they fall in line with the Sabbath as well. Hopefully this helps understand the importance of this day 
and how important it is to show which Allahayim we serve, as other deities have their own feast days. And if we get into the religions of the Gentiles or unbelievers, we will be led away to keep the feast of their deities. Can you read Jubilee chapter 1 verse 9, please? But they will forget all my commandments, even all that I command them. And they will walk after the Gentiles and after their uncleanness and after their shame and will serve their Elohim. And these will prove unto them an offense and a tribulation and an affliction and a snare. This is speaking of what will befall the children of Israel. And for us, because we know we are, whether Jew or Gentile, we're all seeking to be the children of Abraham through faith and good works. If we follow after the Gentiles, that is, those that don't believe and serve the Allahayim of Allahayims, we are going to fall in serving the Allahayim of the Gentiles. And it's going to be an offense, tribulation and affliction and a snare is going to cause us trouble in life. As we talked before in the prior lesson about the afflictions and troubles we go through from idolatry, it's essential to make sure we're cleaving onto the Alahayim of the Hebrews only. Jubilee 6 and 35, please, so we can see what happens or what the children of Israel will prophesy to do following idols, please. Jubilee chapter 6, verse 35. For I know, and from henceforth shall I declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising, for the book lieth written before me, and on the heavenly tables the division of days is ordained. Least they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. So we have the feast of the covenant, the Shabbat day that we're talking about today. And we have the other feasts that are written in the laws and the testimonies. We have to be mindful not to forget the Sabbath because it's going to cause us to error and we'll be walking in ignorance. Okay. We want to be wise, learn and understand the will of Allah and to perform it. But if we're walking in error and ignorance, what would befall us? Jubilees 1 and 13, please. And I shall hide my face from them, and I shall deliver them into the hand of the Gentiles for captivity, and for prey, and for devouring. And I shall remove them from the midst of the land, and I shall scatter them amongst the Gentiles. And they will forget all my law, and all my commandments, and all my judgments, and will go astray as to new moons and Sabbaths and festivals and jubilees and ordinances. And then you have these prophecies have befallen the children of Israel. We did forget the covenant. We did forget the commandments. And we have been walking according to the feasts of the world. So you can see what Allah had prophesied is true. And thus you have awareness through the scriptures that there are feasts of the Gentiles that have their holy days on different days. Yet, for us, we have to be mindful that we're doing the feasts and the holy days of our Elohim. Let's confirm which day is the holy Sabbath of Ahai Elohim to ensure we don't serve any other Elohim. Can you read Sirach chapter 33, verse 7 to 9, please? Sirach chapter 33, verse 7. Why do if one day excel another? When, as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished, and he altered seasons and feasts. It's a very simple question. Why does one day differ from another? Why is one greater than another? Is by the knowledge of the Lord. So thus, we have the Sabbath day by the Lord's making a difference in days according to his knowledge. So it's not something we can change because he ordained it by his own knowledge. All right, continue, please. Some of them have he made high days and hallowed them, and some of them have he made ordinary days. Let's see when the high holy day of the Sabbath is opposed to the ordinary days. Can you read Appendix of John 6, please? 
But the Holy Spirit showed him to them as more cheerful. And on the seventh day, it being the Lord's day, he said to them, now it is time for me also to partake of food. The Lord's day is the seventh day. We know it's seven days in a week. So if we can identify the first day of the week, we will confirm the seventh day at the same time. Can you read the Acts of Peter from the Coptic fragment, please? On the first day of the week, that is Sunday, a multitude gathered together, and they brought unto Peter many sick that he might heal them. Sunday is the first day of the week, thus making Saturday the Lord's day. Let's confirm the Lord's day is the seventh day called the Sabbath. In Acts of Peter chapter 29, please. But Peter had appointed to be with Marcellus on the Lord's day. To see the widows, even as Marcellus had promised, the minister unto them with his own hands. The lad, therefore, that was risen again, said, I depart not from Peter. And his mother, glad and rejoicing, went unto her own house. And on the next day after the Sabbath, she came to Marcellus' house. So there we see confirmation that the Lord's day is the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Thus, you have the seventh day to know which day it is. And we know by precepts, understanding a complete day, the day starts when night comes in. So Friday night, that's the beginning of the Sabbath. And it ends when night comes in on Saturday, making a complete Sabbath day. That's the day of Ahaya Awalahayim. Now we know which day it is. Let's get further understanding of his holy day. Exodus 31, verse 15 to 17, please. Six days may work be done, but on the seventh is the Sabbath the rest, holy unto Ahia. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he sh shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for perpetual covenant. Thus, the seventh day Sabbath, which is the Lord's day, cannot be changed to another day of the week, ever, as it is a perpetual covenant throughout our generations. Continue, please. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days I have made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And can't be changed because it's Ahiah's sign between Israel and himself that he himself rested on the seventh day. With this day's importance, let's read over the laws of the day so we can have respect unto it. Jubilees 50, verse 6 to 13, please. Jubilees chapter 50, verse 6. And behold the commandment regarding the Sabbath. I have written them down for thee, and all the judgments of his laws. Six days shalt thou labor, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of Ahiah Yalahayim. In it ye shall do no manner of work, ye and your sons, and your men servants, and your maid servants, and all your cattle, and the sojourner also that is with you. And the men that does any work on it shall die. Whosoever desecrates that day, Whoever lies with his wife, and whoever says he would do something on it, that he will set out on a journey thereon in regard to any buying or selling. And whoever draws water thereon, which he had not prepared for himself on the sixth day, and whoever takes up any burden to carry it out of his tent or out of his house shall die. And every man who doeth any work thereon or goeth on a journey, or tilleth his farm, whether in his house or any other place. And whoever lighteth a fire, or rideth on any beast, or traveleth by ship on the sea, and whoever striketh or killeth anything, or slaughtereth a beast or a bird, or whoever catcheth an animal or a bird or fish, or whoever fasteth or maketh war on the Sabbath, the man who doeth any of these things on the Sabbath shall die, so that the children of Israel shall observe the Sabbath according to the commandments regarding the Sabbath of the land. 
as it is written in the tables, which he gave unto my hands, that I should write out for thee the laws of the seasons and the seasons according to the division of their days. All right. Let's get some more understanding of the laws. Jubilees 2, verse 29 and 30, please. There was one part that was interesting. He said, he said, your men servant and your maid servant and all your cattle and the sojourner that is also with you. So if you got somebody coming to visit you, they can't do anything on the Sabbath either. Yeah. Praise all I have. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> got to rest. All right. Okay. Love your neighbor as yourself. What you have done to you, do likewise unto others. Jubilees chapter 2, verse 29. Declare and say to the children of Israel the law of this day, both that they should keep Sabbath thereon, and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts, and that it is not lawful to do any work thereon, which is unseemly, to do thereon their own pleasure. Remember to beware not to err by forsaking the Sabbath to sin on that day by doing our own pleasure that's against the will of Allah. Right? And that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk. Don't make food or drink on Sabbath. Have them already prepared beforehand so that you only need condiments to add to it. Right? And that it is not lawful to draw water. It takes work to draw water from a well or cistern, but turning on the sink is not the same thing. We can do that lawfully. Continue, please. Or bring in or take out thereon through their gates any burden which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwellings. And they shall not bring in nor take out from house to house on that day. For that day is more holy and blessed than any jubilee day of the jubilees. Now, you remember in Sirach, it said he had made some days high days above others. We get understanding that the Sabbath is more holy and blessed than all days of the year in the sight of Allah. All right. Continue, please. On this we kept Sabbath in the heavens before it was made known to any flesh to keep Sabbath thereon on the earth. This is the angel speaking. So we can understand that angels have been keeping Sabbath before it was known to be kept in the earth because it's more holy than all the days in the sight of Allah. Can you read Jubilees chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, and then 20 and 21, please? Jubilee chapter 2, verse 17. And he gave us a great sign, the Sabbath day, that we should work six days to keep Sabbath on the seventh day from all work. So the angels were given that great sign first. Confirmation also that the angels keep Sabbath too. Continue, please. And all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes, he has bidden us to keep the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. So we see they keep Sabbath in both worlds. And if you remember from there's one lesson we talked about the circumcision, understanding it, that the children of Israel, Allah had made it that they were to be as the angels of the presence and sanctification. Hence, they had to do the circumcision. And also, we're going to see here, hence, they have to keep the Sabbath as well. Continue, please. Verse 20. And I have chosen the seed of Jacob from among all that I have seen. And I've written him down as my firstborn son. And I've sanctified him unto myself forever and ever. And I would teach them the Sabbath day, that they may keep Sabbath thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should keep Sabbath with us on the seventh day, to eat and to drink, and to bless him who has created all things as he has blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples and that they should keep sabbath together with us israel was sanctified to keep sabbath with allah and his angels and understand this isn't a thing for boson because it was only for his love for our fathers and it was his choice it was not because of some righteousness of our own so we can remember to walk in humility as he chose himself to write israel down as his firstborn and sanctify him unto himself all right 
And it comes with responsibility. We're accountable to do as he's ordained for us. Now we see Israel is sanctified, yet there are other sheep who are not of the fold of Israel that are being gathered on Talahayim to be sanctified with him and his angels too. Can you read John 10, verse 15 and 16, please? As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. By precept, the other sheep, this other fold, are the sons of the stranger, who are not of the race of the children of Israel. Can you read Isaiah 56, verse 6 uh, to 8, please? Isaiah chapter 56, verse 6. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves unto Ahiah to serve him, and to love the name of Ahiah, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of my covenant. The Gentiles will learn the laws and keep the Sabbath from polluting it by not giving in to any iniquity to keep the day holy, taking hold of the covenant to obey Ahiah's voice with Israel. They will be rewarded in the end too to come to Zion. Continue reading, please. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And the Lord Ahiah, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. Then you have brothers and sisters of the nations that is not just Israel that's being gathered. Alahayim said that he will gather others to him, which are the sons of the strangers. So this salvation is for all nations, all children of Abraham through faith and by faith. Thus the outcasts of Israel will be gathered unto him and the sons of the strangers of the Gentiles that believe and take hold of the covenant to be his servants and to do justice and not pollute the Sabbath will be gathered unto Yache too. Israel is merely the firstborn son with responsibility to set an example. Jubilee chapter 2, verse 24 to 28, please. And to this, Jacob and his seed, it was granted that they should always be the blessed and holy ones of the first testimony and law, even as he had sanctified and blessed the Sabbath day on the seventh day. So in simplicity, it just is what it is. Jacob's true seed will be blessed and sanctified just as the Sabbath day. His true seed are those who come to repentance, to submit themselves, to obey Allah voice with joyfulness of heart, to keep his commandments and bring forth the fruits of his commandments, and they won't be grievous to them. Continue, please. He created heaven and earth and everything that he created in six days. And Allah made the seventh day holy for all his works. Therefore, he commanded on its behalf that whoever does any work thereon shall die, and that he who defiles it shall surely die. Wherefore do thou command the children of Israel to observe this day, that they may keep it holy and not to do thereon any work, and not to defile it, as it is holier than all other days. And whoever profanes it shall surely die. And whoever does thereon any work shall surely die eternally. That the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generations, and not be rooted out of the land. For it is an holy day and a blessed day. And everyone who observes it and keeps Sabbath thereon from all his work, would be holy and blessed throughout all days like unto us. Thus we, whether Hebrew or Gentile, will be holy and blessed like the angels by keeping Sabbath, not transgressing. So let's be sure to do so. Now this lesson comes with homework assignments. We didn't go into every single thing about the law here because there's a playlist called Keeping the Sabbath, HRC Playlist, Please go watch it in its entirety and 
get the edification because we go deeper into the laws of the Sabbath and it will help complement this lesson with everything that the playlist touches on for understanding the Sabbath. All right. Anything else, Zachwa? I think that's good. All right. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Check out the website, HebrewReaders.com. Uh, we hope that edification is good. Any questions, comments, feel free to write on the comment section of a lesson or email us at HebrewReaders at Gmail. And be sure to check out Zach what did it again for some good music for the Sabbath day. All right. Peace. <laughs> the uh before we go, the um <laughs> on all the social media platforms is gonna be either Hebrew Readers or Hebrew Readers Church. So you just type in that and it should pull up. All okay. Right. Peace be with you guys. <laughs> so HRC, 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 HRC,